Hello and welcome to the Game Club, this section of our channel where we talk about a game that we have been playing in this past week and if you played along with us you can share your thoughts in the comment section below or you know send us a message at selectcharacters at gmail.com. I've cast myself in the role as the audience surrogate because I have no idea what this game is about at all because I've been ill for the past couple of weeks. So here to explain to me why this game is worth playing is Sam Yates and Ryan Dildine. Hi guys. Hello. Hey. So, to start off, what the fuck is Cobalt? That's a good question, man. It's um, <laughs> it's a lot. It's a 2D platformer, also competitive kind of game. Basically, what you're looking at is something like a platformer. It's probably the easiest way to start. Mm -hmm. You've got um, guns, weapons, melee attacks, all your general wealth of weaponry available, and basically you are play as a robot. And the story mode is you on your ship trying to figure out what happened to this planet and why all the humans aren't there and kind of escalates from that. But I okay. imagine that that's sort of a good kind of umbrella way to describe it. So is it single player or is it multiplayer only? Uh, it's, it's both. both yeah. yeah, it's got uh, I mean, okay. it's got a story mode, um, which I wish I'd, I had gotten into further. I got a little bit into it, but not super far. And uh, the multiplayer is what really grabbed me. I mean, the it's got... Um, casual and competitive modes. It's got um, what deathmatch, a, a mode called Team Strike, where you. Um, it's actually kind of reminded me of Counter Strike because you pick like your class and like what uh, not what weapons they have, but they they all have their different pros and cons, you know. Um, mm -hmm. So you get to pick them based on their stats and based on the amount of money you have. Um, and then there's oh Sam, what's the third one? It's pub plug slam. Plug slam, yeah, and that's like soccer sort of but you just pick up this um plug and you, you, there's two goals and you just run around trying to throw it into the goal and then you know just plays out like uh, any other sports game right so i haven't heard a lot of this game but what i've heard of it is very very positive and i know that sam's really really into this why what makes this game better than other games in the in the multiplayer platform genre if that's a thing <laughs> I think it's got something to do with the path to mastery or the the road that you take as you gain skill in it because at first it feels like you're out of control and you have no idea what's happening and sometimes you'll do something cool. Yeah. Right. And that's often the hook that's really what draws you into a game is because you don't, you're not even sure what you're doing but somehow you do something amazing. Like you bounce a grenade off something and you kill like three guys or something and you're like, whoa, that was awesome. I don't know how I did it but that was amazing. Yeah, it sounds and like literally every match in Rocket League for me. Sure, yeah, that's that's not a bad point of comparison because it's, it's like the same way. And then you realize you sort of gradually gain skill and you get to the point where now you're doing those things on purpose. It's that road to gaining skill and that road to mastery. Right, is, is, is there a high skill ceiling? Yes, I feel there is. I yeah? think so, yeah, it feels like it. Um, when you roll, your character does a roll, and the if you throw grenades, they'll go out at the angle that he's facing as he's rolling, and right. then you can also punch the ground and stuff, so there's a lot of timing involved with that. And then just general movement stuff, gaining speed, keeping speed, all that kind of thing. It's It feels like it could be pretty up there. Yeah, it's. I mean, right. it's very fast paced, and you have to be really fluid with your movements, and you know, kind of stay one or two steps ahead of your character and everybody else's characters. And um, I think it's got a really, really high, like a good chance for a high skill ceiling because I've been playing, you know, for the past couple of weeks, and uh, I feel like I'm getting a decent mastery of the game. But every time I go in online, even if there's like five or six people online, there's like always one or two guys who are so much better. Than everybody else, yeah. and and it seems to be that way all the time. So I think people, uh, people are gonna really um, get get very good at this game, like better than I think most people would imagine by looking at it. Yeah, it's funny that you should mention the five or six people online because I've been I've been hearing that that game, <laughs> despite it being be, being a fan favorite already, isn't really doing all that well financially. What? Why would that be? I don't know. That's a tough call, man. And who knows what makes a game spark in this day and age? I really have no idea. Yeah. It could be just that not enough people have heard about it, not enough people have come to the table to make that yes or no decision. Yeah, which will be weird, you know, because it's it, it's published by Mojang, the makers of Minecraft. Yeah. They are owned in turn by Microsoft. You, you'd think that the marketing machine of one of the biggest companies in the world would be fully behind a game that they have published, and but it's not, which is My odd. only... 
Yeah, my only guess there would be that it started development before the Microsoft thing. Also, I don't know if Microsoft straight out owns Mojang or if they just own Minecraft. No, they 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 own Mojang. I mean, they bought out Notch. Yeah, they did for whatever billions and <laughs> billions of dollars, like yeah. two billion dollars or whatever. When I first came into this game, uh, and kind of like how Sam mentioned in the video, it feels very much like it's being pulled in a lot of directions. Um, because it's it's kind of hard to see what the focus is at the beginning. Is it you know the story they're competitive in? Uh, normally, I would hope that a game would focus on one while not letting the other slack. But I mean, Cobalt does it like Sam said. It does everything really well. Like it brings everything into one cohesive uh, unit, and it doesn't it doesn't feel like they're focusing too much on one thing or the other. It feels like they put a lot of focus into everything. And the when I play, it's like, man, I want to play competitive, but I also want to play the story and. It's, it's just you, you can get totally sucked into one and then when you finish it you can go right into the other and have a totally awesome experience doing that also. Right. I, it, it sounds pretty complex, like all the features you've just listed. I mean, it, it sounds like that game is, is doing an awful lot and your attention is divided between an awful lot of things. Does the game do a decent job at sort of easing you into the mechanics? Does it teach you? Does it teach you well I think so. and, and quickly enough to become competitive the, within a, a reasonable time frame? And it it really walks you through like a tutorial. every little yeah. thing you can do and how the to how to do it and like how to apply it in different situations. So you know if um, in the tutorial say they're teaching you how to roll and they say you know if you roll at the right time yeah. you're going to deflect bullets. Um, so you're like, okay, cool. So you go into the story mode, and you start using that. Um, you start using that role when you come into the you you run into the instance that you saw in the tutorial. But then you start realizing, oh, it works in this situation. It works in this situation. And then you go into you know deathmatch, and then you start using it all the time because it's you know you need to deflect bullets and move around faster and stuff. So when I I mean when I first came in, it was like there were a lot of mechanics, but once you start applying them, it's it's quick like. I mean, a day's time and year, I feel like you can have a pretty good command of, of the controls. Ah, that's pretty good then. Like, it, the skill ceiling's really high, but it's very easy to access initially. And it's not, it's not like, you know, there's a limited number of things you can do. There's a whole lot yeah. of things you can do, but there's also not so many that you forget them. You'll Because you run through the tutorial, they teach you, like, nine or ten different things and you sort of don't think about it until you run into that situation but as soon as you do it sparks your brain you're like oh i remember they showed me how to do this and right. then you kind of execute on that it's not so many that you get lost in the the whole cloud of all this different like complicated button presses and combos and all this stuff yeah, and it's you know that that reminds me like i um based felt like it was going to be that way i felt like buttons. it was going to be you know just 13 button long combos but it wasn't like every every action flows really well with all the others <laughs> yep all right so good clean fun then yeah it's absolutely good clean fun yeah okay what about the presentation outside of the mechanics like what about the game's looks do they do they complement the world well do they complement well the mechanics well is the overall vibe yeah. uh, attractive <laughs> enough to the eyes if you if you will yeah <laughs> I mean, it's it's pretty enough. It's not yeah. it's not a stunner, but I think it looks great for yeah, what it is. Was that a weird question or? No, not at all. Not at all. I mean, <laughs> it's a weird question because of how it relates to this particular game. Right. Yeah. B because I don't think, I don't think this game would gain anything by making extremely complicated graphics. I think at a certain point, you want what's on the screen to be simplistic enough that you can discern everything that's going on because there will be. 800 things happening at the same time yeah. in this game and you don't right. want to visually complicate that too much but you still want it to look pretty yeah i think the, so the best it's not going to crack it, any graphics um, charts but i think it rides the line just how it, it it's buttery like. smooth cool um i mean playing online there's never a time where i felt like you know there was a lag spike or anything like that i didn't feel like mm. there was any frame rate drops the game's just it's just like i said buttery smooth and um i, I think I, at least for me that's that's one of my favorite things about the game. All right, cool. That sounds like a ring um, endorsement by both of you. Yes. Uh, anything you'd like to uh, like to add to this? <laughs> I before just we end had this? it. Hang on. <laughs> 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 
most of the stuff that I would want to add is already in my opinion video. I think that the standout feature in this game isn't really any one particular thing it does. It's just that it does so many things in a way that is good. There's secrets everywhere in the maps. You can come at the maps from like eight different angles that deciding how you want to approach the enemy. Right. You can do stealth. You can do just flat out aggression. You have so many options in what you do. There's mini games in there that wouldn't don't seem like they fit in this platform game but then they do you can get pets by taming the creatures in the world there's just so many systems that they just they didn't have to and it almost doesn't make sense but then you play it and it works and that sort of yeah I, I, that disconnect that brain well, barrier there is what i think is no about. but i right. remembered another so, thing i wanted to say back to ryan like, uh, did you remember what you wanted to say figures were low for this game i think it's really unfortunate <laughs> because i mean i'm not at all a platformer aficionado so i don't know where this really ranks yeah. compared to other platformers but it, it's um it's a little bit disheartening to see a game that's that i think is so good only have four people online at a time you know um so i don't know i i hope i mean by us talking about it that it kind of gets a little more publicity because i think yeah. it's a game that's that's really complex i think it's really well polished i think you know visually it's great uh the s sound is great on it the, uh, the the soundtrack and music and stuff uh, all the sound effects are great like i i really have a hard time finding something that i don't like about the game i feel i feel a lot about this game like i do rocket league like it's a game i can just hop in like, just have some really cool action, you know, do some cool stuff, maybe play a little bit of story mode, hop out, and we're good to go. Yeah. Well, you know what we'll do? We'll just put a link to the Steam Store page in the description. If uh, anybody listening wants to check it out, you can do so by clicking that link in the doobly-doo below. And, uh, yeah, that's Cobalt for us. Um... We do this every week. We pick a new game to play on the podcast, which comes out every Wednesday. Uh, it's on this channel. If you if you want to want to listen to the podcast on this channel, it's every Wednesday. Um, it's also on SoundCloud. Um, you can get it on on iTunes, for instance, as well. Just check the links in the description if you want to subscribe to us. Thank you very much. We'd appreciate this because we uh, we like to think that we are working hard on the content you see on this channel as well as uh, on the podcast. And if you want to find out what we're going yeah. to play next week, go by listen Cobalt. to the podcast. Um, that was it, basically, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> yeah. Go by Cobalt. All right. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you next time.